I want to propose a lifestyle. It's kind of a self-help program, but the interesting thing about this one is that it's one of the very first self-help programs in human history. It's called Epicureanism. You might have heard the word Epicureanism or Epicurean. If so, you probably associate it with things like fancy foods or fine dining, but actually this couldn't be further from the original meaning of Epicureanism. True Epicureanism began long ago in a faraway place. Over 2,000 years ago, in the Mediterranean world, there lived a very wise man. He wore a beard and sandals and preached gratitude, humility, and acceptance. He gained a huge following, and his teachings became extremely popular for the next several centuries after his death. His name was Epicurus. Epicurus was a Greek philosopher roughly around the time of Plato, but unlike other philosophers at that time, Epicurus welcomed everyone to his school of philosophy. Rich, poor, Greek, barbarian, men, women, even prostitutes. This is a very modern attitude to consider all humans of equal status despite uh, race, sex, or class. But Epicurus was a man ahead of his time. In fact, I like to think of Epicurus as the original millennial. <laughs> Another cool thing about Epicurus, while philosophers like Plato were theorizing about abstract ideas, Epicurus was offering practical life advice. Want to know how to be happier? Check out Epicureanism. To begin with, according to Epicurus, one, the, the one key ingredient to living your best life is serenity. In other words, profound peace of mind. Sounds very modern, huh? Ahead of his time, ahead of his time. So peace of mind is the goal in life, and therefore the enemies are stress and anxiety. Now Epicurus offered many practical, straightforward ways that each of us can reduce serenity, excuse me, reduce, <laughs> the opposite, quite the opposite, to reduce stress and anxiety in our lives and increase our serenity. I'm going to focus on one of those tonight. First, though, you might think that 2,000-year-old advice might not be very applicable to our modern lives here in America in 2019. But I would argue that most of Epicurus's ideas are even more relevant and useful today than they ever have been. And I think that Epicureanism could help most of us be happier people. Here's why. Life in modern America is full of wonderful prose. For example, one dollar cheesy bean and rice burritos. <laughs> but there are also some cons. Today we face a peculiar set of temptations. No, I'm not talking about pornography or gambling or Candy Crush. I mean the temptations to have lots of money and have lots of stuff. Sure, these might not seem very dangerous, after all, how bad could it be to have lots of money and the financial freedom that comes with that? But Epicurus argues that wealth and possessions usually decrease happiness rather than increase it. In short, if you want to be happier, be poor. According to Epicureans, this is one of the most important things we can do to increase our serenity. And now more than ever, we could use this advice. In America today, we are encouraged from a young age to make lots of money. For example, when you were in college, you probably had a parent try to convince you to major in something marketable, like business, rather than what you really wanted to study, like philosophy. I'll assume that everybody here wanted to major in philosophy. <laughs> if we're given the choice between two jobs, we're generally expected to choose the one that pays more. I mean, it's a given in our culture these days that the, the higher the wage, the better, right? But the thing is, Money doesn't buy happiness, money buys stress. It might feel like you'd be happier with more money and more things, but what if the answer instead is that you should live a simple life? Simplicity is one of the core lifestyle choices of Epicureans. Now, of course, we need some money. Living paycheck to paycheck is stress and anxiety. And statistically, to be the happiest we can be, we need to meet our basic needs and have a little extra spending money. But those basic needs are easier to meet than you might think. In fact, this is one way that practicing Epicureanism is even easier today than it was back in ancient Greece. Because in America today, meeting your basic needs 
is easier than ever. With the relatively low cost of food, with secondhand stores like Savers, with free water, guaranteed clean, available at any public drinking fountain, it's practically a miracle what we've achieved as a society. It takes less money now to meet your basic needs than ever before. So it is possible to live simply in America today, but why live so simply according to Epicureanism? How does being poorish make us happier? Many reasons. To start off, when you're poor, you own fewer things and cheaper things. And when you own only a few cheap things, you won't stress about losing or breaking those things. It's the difference between the guy who's so worried about his new Lexus getting scratched that he parks in the far corner of the parking lot, you know that guy, and the person with the old rust bucket. She has no concerns about her cheap old car getting another scratch. There's a profound peace of mind in that kind of fearlessness. Uh, actually, the, the most Epicurean car is probably a bicycle. So when our things are nice and new, we're inviting stress and anxiety into our lives. On the other hand, when your possessions could be replaced easily, then you don't have to worry about them getting lost or broken or stolen. Besides, when your things are fancy, it's not as if you go around loving them more than people with cheap things do. According to psychologists, we quickly get used to the niceness of our things, and our expectations rise, too. Which leads us to another problem. It just seems to be in our nature as human beings to want what we don't have, especially when you already have a lot. This is a problem because wanting what you don't have kind of sucks. In one study, people are shown a list of big-ticket items. Uh, the real list is a lot longer, but this gives you an idea. People are asked, how many of these items do you consider necessary for the good life, but you do not currently own? The average answer is about two. So most people are saying that there are two things that they do not own, but they want to own because they think of them as necessary for the good life. A couple decades later, on average, these same people have achieved their dreams and acquired the two big-ticket items that they wanted. So what happens when you show them the list again and ask them the same question, how many of these items do you not own but consider necessary for the good life? You might think the answer would be zero, right? Since before they had said two and have now, on average, acquired those two things. But the new number is two. <laughs> As the number of things we have goes up, the number of things we want goes up. The more you have, the more you want. We can get stuck in an endless cycle of desire if we're not careful. So how do we stop the cycle? Epicurus suggests stoke your gratitude. Stoke your gratitude. The key is to focus your mind on loving and appreciating the few things that you already own. And forget about your desire for more. The grass is already so green. It's not easy, and it may chafe against the way you've been taught to think, but it is liberating to only want what you already have. The keeping up with the Joneses mentality just invites jealousy and stress. Let go of that mentality and enjoy peace of mind. Possibly the best reason to be poor, though, is this. The simpler your lifestyle, the less money you need to maintain it. The less money you need, the less you have to work. And the less you have to work, the more time you have to spend doing the things that really bring meaning to your life. Whether that's spending time with family, or hiking, or knitting, or playing video games. If, like most people, for you, work is a necessary evil, something that must be done in order to make money, consider doing less of it. Why spend time doing something you don't enjoy when you could be doing the things you really love? Sure, you may only be able to afford a small apartment and a few cheap possessions, but remember, Epicurus says that's the best way to live anyway. If, on the other hand, you're one of those people, one of those lucky people that really loves their job, then this advice may not apply to you. If your work genuinely brings you happiness and not too much stress or anxiety, then, of course, you don't need to cut your hours if you don't want to. In fact, modern research says that meaningful work is one of the top factors in our happiness today. 
Epicurus realized this too. <clears throat> Which is another reason why I think of Epicurus as the original millennial. Millennials care less about money than any other generation, and they care a lot about having meaningful work. Epicurus agreed. He believed that money doesn't really matter, and the most important thing is that you're passionate about what you're doing. To Epicurus and many millennials, it seems obvious that life is to enjoy. And so spending it doing anything other than what you're most passionate about seems silly. I think they've got it right. Living your best life does not need money. It needs passion, meaning, serenity. Each of us has challenges, very modern challenges. As you face them, consider one of the oldest self-help programs in human history. Let go of the desire for wealth, and instead, practice gratitude. And follow your bliss.